Hi, welcome to this session about embedded Linux on RISC-V with Beagle 5, Yocto and Open Embedded. My name is Leona Navi, I'm a software engineer and a huge open source enthusiast. I work for a company called Kansuku Group, which is specialized in open source development in various popular projects, including the Linux kernel, U-Boot, Automotive Gray Linux, the Yocto project, Open Embedded, Build Root, and numerous solutions for software over the year updates, including Mender, Rauk, and LibOS3. Today, I have the pleasure to show you this better unit of Beagle 5 and to talk about some of the technologies, how to build a custom GNU Linux distribution for it. The agenda includes uh, a brief introduction to RISC-V. After that, we will spend some time talking about Beagle 5. Uh, I'll also explain you what is the Yocto project and Open Embedded and how it can help you build your custom GNU Linux distribution specifically for a RISC-V device capable of running Linux. Finally, we'll wrap it up with conclusions and there will be time for questions and answers. So RISC-V uh, is written like this, but it's pronounced RISC-V because it's the uh, V is for the uh, Roman symbol for the uh, digit 5. It is an open instruction set architecture based on established reduced instruction set computer principles. Uh, this, of course, is not the first uh, uh, risk instruction set out there. Uh, the absolute uh, market leader and most popular uh, risk in instruction set as of the moment is ARM. Other example for a uh, uh, risk instruction set is MIPS. However, the big difference that is uh, brought by RISC-V is that it's open source, which means that you do not um, have to pay fees if you develop a microcontroller or a microprocessor based on this architecture. Um, and this is uh, potentially a game changer. You all know very well that in the past decade, uh, following the, the appearance of Arduino, the open source hardware movement uh, is becoming more and more popular. And now uh, we can bring the open source hardware to a next level. Uh, because until uh, RISC-V, we were speaking about uh, open source hardware for printed circuit boards. And now we can speak about open source hardware chips. Um, there, there is already an existing uh, instruction set specification for RISC-V for 32-bit and 60 uh, four bit address space and um, the, uh, uh, the 128 bit uh, instruction set remains not yet frozen. However, this is something that you can keep an eye and eventually in um, several years or maybe decades, uh, such um, processors will appear. Risk 5 isn't a new project, but making chips is difficult, uh, so <laughs> it takes some time. Uh, for uh, uh, RISC-V devices to appear on the market. RISC-V uh, was started in 2010 at the University of California in the United States. However, nowadays there are a lot of companies and individuals out outside of the University of California contributing to RISC-V. Now let's focus on Beagle 5. And actually, this is Beagle 5. This is, uh, as I told you, this is a better unit that I've uh, recently received as a software developer for evaluation, uh, for spreading uh, the word about it. And um, it's, it's written, again, just uh, in a similar fashion as RISC-V, but it's pronounced Beagle 5. It is advertised as uh, the first affordable RISC-V computer designed to run Linux. In fact, Beagle 5 is not the first computer, a RISC-V computer, uh, RISC computer uh, capable of running Linux, but unlike the uh, previous computers out there, it will be in affordable price range. Better devices are already available, I've just shown you once, and um, mass production is expected to, be, um, to uh, start really soon and to be available in September this year for a price of about 150 US dollars. Of course, keep in mind that at the moment there is a global chip shortage on the market and hardware manufacturing is um, going a little bit slower than expect expected in general. It will be great if um, it's possible uh, to have BO5 production units uh, ready in September. 
and uh, I really enjoy if this happens but just keep in mind that the whole industry is expecting some is experiencing some difficulties due to chips shortage uh, Big of five is um, it's available thanks to the efforts of three strategic partners Beagle Board Foundation, uh, which are famous for the uh, Beagle Board development boards with uh, Texas Instruments uh, systems on the chip, such as Beagle Bone Black. The other partner is Seed Studio. Uh, Seed Studio offers various of services, including uh, printed circuit boards. Um, they have their own um uh, development boards uh, designed uh, manufactured and they're also uh, selling um, various um, components including a lot of open source hardware components through their marketplace and the third uh, strategic partner uh, for big of five is starfy this is a chinese company a relatively new company which is actually um, making the system on a chip on the big of five Um, let's have a closer look at the specifications of the Beagle 5. So it has a Star 5 RISC, uh, RISC 5 U74 dual core CPU with 2 gigabytes of L2 cache. There, there are 8 gigabytes of LD, uh, DDR4 RAMs which are spread on two banks. Uh, there are a bunch of connectors. Uh, you can see here are uh, here is the Ethernet port, four USB, three connectors. Uh, there is an audio jack over here and there is a 40 pin header the 40 pin header is uh, using the same pin out just as the raspberry pi as you probably remember in 2014 the raspberry pi foundation uh, changed the, uh, the pins on the raspberry pi extended them to 40 and since then all raspberry pis have 40 pin header which is very very popular in the maker community so uh, beagle board is using the same pin out which will uh, make things easier for makers uh, who are already familiar with raspberry pi so what is the difference between the better unit that i have here and the unit which is going to be available once the mass production is started well the major difference is the cpu at the moment uh, this better unit is with star 5 jh7100 the production will be with the mass production will be with star 5 jh7110 both of them are risk 5 uh, dual core uh, cpus with, uh, running at one gigahertz they have um, However, one major difference. Uh, as you have noticed, there is a huge fan uh, and a radiator on, um, on the Beagle 5 beta unit. This is the beta unit. It's, uh, it's something that you notice immediately when, when you see the board, the huge fan. This is because um, the cooling, uh, it, it's of course uh, because, of, um, because of the heat uh, during uh, the design of the beta unit and uh, Star 5 JH7100, uh, uh, low power consumption was not taken in consideration, and because of this, it, uh, it heats a lot. Now, uh, they're working, Star 5 is uh, working on a new version of the project to address this issue. Uh, while uh, people like me are doing the software development. So once um, Beagle 5 is ready for mass production, uh, the, uh, this, this problem uh, will be solved. Uh, there, there is going to be a good lower power consumption function and there will be no need of such huge fan and radiator, or at least not all the time. And uh, here I have taken a photo of of uh, this particular beta unit that I have after removing uh, the, the, the fan. There are some screws which can be easily removed so that I can access uh, the CPU and make this photo for you. Now, speaking about embedded, embedded Linux devices uh, such as, uh, such as um, Beagle 5, uh, we have to say that um, in most of the, the most of the time in the industry when you use such kind of a device you have a very specific purpose what to do with it and for this specific purpose most probably you need 
um, a very specific Linux distribution. So embedded Linux devices um, uh, obviously dominate various industries, including Internet of Things, and to save time, money, uh, time and money, the best practice is to create a custom Linux distribution based on a proven build system and software update mechanism. Although we don't have enough time to talk about software update mechanisms in this presentation, we will uh, focus on build systems. There are various different build systems out there. Uh, the most popular are the Yocto project and Open Embedded, which we'll focus on, but there are alternatives such as Buildroot or PDX Linux. There is also uh, things like Ubuntu Snap. So there is a huge choice out there. However, um, kind of an industry standard nowadays is to use the Yocto project and Open Embedded. Uh, building a, a Linux distribution requires a lot of components. Here is a very, very simple uh, diagram to show some of the key components that you need to integrate in a Linux distribution. Uh, of course, at the bottom there, there is the hardware. The hardware is always specific, specific in the embedded world. There is a boot loader uh, to boot the hardware and to load the Linux distribution. Of course, there is uh, Linux kernel, device trees, and eventually the de uh, device tree binary overlays. You need a startup configuration system. Uh, nowadays, uh, new systems are almost all new systems are based on system D. However, however some legacy systems might be using system 5. Um, the Linux distribution includes a huge number of packages providing various libraries and uh, daemons, uh, as well as all dependencies for the application running on the top. Some devices nowadays are headless devices, they don't have uh, a monitor, they don't have a graphical user interface, so uh, um, so there are more specific. However, of course, if you develop something like a kiosk, you need a, you need a monitor, a touchscreen display eventually, and a graphical user interface. So depending on these needs, you have to create a different different distribution. And making something like this with all these layers and different packages is um, it, it, it's something difficult. It, it takes time to combine all these packages to make them working. And if you have to start from scratch, this could take a huge amount of time. So the solution uh, to, to this is to use something that works out of the box, such as the Yocto project. The Yocto project is an open source collaborative project of the Linux Foundation for creating custom Linux based systems for embedded devices using the Open Embedded Build System. The Open Embedded Build System includes Bitbake and Open Embedded Core. Furthermore, uh, the Octo project also provides you Pocky. This is a reference distribution uh, which is provided as, as metadata without any binary files. The idea of Pocky is to bootstrap your own distribution for embedded devices so that you don't need to start from scratch, but instead you take Pocky, which is already a very small reference distribution, and you customize it by adding whatever you need to it to, to achieve uh, the end result needed for your device. Furthermore, the Yocto project has a um, new release twice per year, and there are long-term support releases which are covering two-year product. As you know, uh, the development of Internet of Things and embedded devices often uh, requires quite a lot of time, and because of this, it's a good idea to pick up a release of the Yocto project which has this uh, long-term support, which will give you enough time to make sure that while you are developing uh, your applications and your Linux distribution, you are still with a supported release. And uh, here we can have a closer look at the available releases as of the moment. Each release has a code name, there is also a version number and a release date. Uh, the Yocto project is uh, famous for very good planning. Um, every April and October there is a new release. Um, most of the time there are on time, actually. I don't remember any delays. Quite, uh, the community, it's, it, both the community and all developers working on the Yocto project are doing a great job to keep up the good pace. And actually I'm one of the, um, one, one of the uh, contributors to the Yocto project and various open, uh, open embedded uh, layers. 
Uh, currently, the long-term uh, stable release is Delpho, and it was released in April last year. Uh, last year, and it will be um, it will be maintained for two years, which means until April 2022. Um, the stable version at the moment is 3.3 uh, with a hard not uh, code name, and there is a new release planned for October this year. Um, a quick crash course for Yocto and Open Embedded. Well, honestly, uh, Yocto and Open Embedded have a steep learning curve. Uh, at the beginning, you may face some challenges to get used to, to Yocto and Open Embedded um, because it's very flexible, but um, this flexibility means that there are a lot of variables, configurations, and things that you need to learn. So basically, um, uh, the, the metadata is divided into recipes. This is the most common form of metadata. Uh, the, a recipe contains instructions as a list of settings and tasks for building packages. Um, uh, the, the packages are used um, to, to uh, generate the binary image, which you finally flash on the board. A recipe describes source code, uh, additional patches, dependencies for um, libraries or other recipes, as well as configuration and compilation options. All these recipes are uh, organized in what is called a layer. This is a collection of related recipes and configurations uh, which isolate information used when building uh, for multiple architectures, which means that you can have the same application a recipe for the same application in a, in a certain layer and build it for different architectures, for example, for ARM or, as in our case today, for RISC-V. Um, layers are hierarchical and uh, their ability to override, there is an ability um, to override previous specifications depending on the priority of the layer. Uh, the Octo project uh, has a very good documentation which is available at the website docs.yoctoproject.org. Now, in order to use a specific board, for example, uh, for example, the board that we have, the Beagle 5, we need a board support package. Um, and in, in the ecosystem of the Yocto project and Open Embedded, the board support package comes as a Yocto layer and Open Embedded layer, which uh, contains uh, recipes for building the kernel, eventually the boot water, some specific uh, configurations. Uh, additional specific configurations if needed. And the layer that we're going to use for Beagle 5 is called Meta Risk 5. It is a collection for all supported Risk 5 machines capable of running Linux at the moment. And actually, there are only two of them the Sci 5 uh, High 5 Unleashed board, um, which is a great board, but it's um, quite expensive. It's, uh, uh, the Unleashed board is about a thousand uh, US dollars, while Beagle 5 is uh, significantly more affordable as it will be available for a fraction of the price of the Hi5 Unleashed. Meta Risk 5 has uh, configurations for both of these machines. As you can see here, uh, the, this is the uh, Star 5 CPU, which is uh, still available in beta as soon as, uh, in the beta units, as soon as uh, uh, Beagle 5 uh, has production um, stable production ready uh, units with the new version of the uh, CPU. Uh, another definition will be created. The source uh, the source code of the Meta Risk Five um, layer is available at GitHub under MIT license. Um, the project is uh, having different branches. This is actually uh, uh, typical for um, for um, pretty much all layers out there. Uh, you've seen the, this long list of um, uh, Yocto Project's releases, which are happening each six months. And um, in general, there is a separate Git branch for, uh, for a particular release. And yes, uh, the Yocto Project is uh, um, something that is uh, using Git a lot. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> you, you need to know Git in order to use the Yocto Project and open embed it. Uh, here are the contributors. Meta Risk 5 isn't a new layer. It has been started at the end of 2017, 
and um, nowadays there's um, quite a lot of development going on uh, because of Beagle 5. You can see the top contributors, uh, um, which are well known in the community, especially uh, Cam Rush, uh, they are contributing uh, in order to make it possible for you uh, to, uh, to build images for this board. And of course, contributions are always uh, welcome. As I told you, the source code is available in GitHub, so you can make GitHub pull requests. And now um, let's have a look at the steps how to build a GNU/Linux distribution for Beagle 5. Uh, the first thing is to use Git clone to clone all the appropriate uh, branches, uh, compatible branches of Pocky, Meta Open Embedded, and Meta Risk 5. Uh, so by saying compatible, what I mean is that they must be using the same release of the Yocto project. Once you download this, the source code by git cloning it, the second thing is to initialize the build environment using the source command and the specific script, which is actually part of the Pocky repository. Then the next thing is to add all your layers in conf slash bblayers.conf and to set the machine to Beagle, uh, Beagle 5 star, uh, starlight jh7100 in conf slash local.com. Um, so uh, both conf slash local conf and conf slash bblayers.conf are uh, specific uh, files for uh, Open Embedded and uh, the Yocto project. These are the files that you configure which layers to, to be used and some um, important general uh, configurations such as the machine name. Uh, furthermore, optionally in local.conf uh, you can uh, switch Pocky to use systemd. Um, so Pocky is the reference distribution. Of course, if you want, you can uh, create uh, your own distribution with different name by extending Pocky and uh, put uh, these configurations uh, in the configuration files for your distribution instead of uh, using uh, conflocal.conf. However, um, in this presentation, I'm showing the, the, the basics. So the easiest way to uh, switch to systemd is to directly uh, do it in com slash uh, um, local.com. The, the second thing is to, um, to build an image. Uh, core image minimo is a very, very minimalistic image uh, capable of just booting the board. By typing bitbake core image minimo, you start a procedure which can take up to several hours depending on the hardware capabilities on the build machine on which you're building this Linux distribution and um, the internet connection. Uh, so here I'm exp explaining these steps. So um, the idea here is that you're gonna execute these steps on a very powerful uh, x86-64 machine on which you're gonna build an image. You're gonna cross compile an image for RISC-V. The output of this image, uh, the, the whole procedure, this this uh, executing this this line bit bake core image minimal can take um, even uh, more than a couple of hours uh, depending on, on the circumstances in which you are working in your environment uh, but once it's ready next builds will be faster because uh, bit bake will be reusing the already downloaded files and the shared state Finally, when you have the image using um, uh, tools such as DD or bmap tool you have to um, to copy the output image to the uh, to a micro SD card. This is just an example. That's why we have the X here. Uh, of course, it's gonna be something different on your system. Uh, this is the name of um, of the image that will be generated. It will be generated in the temporary directory. Um, so this is just an example how you're gonna flash it once it's ready. Uh, so, so let's have a look at the common images, uh, images which are uh, commonly used in uh, the Yocto project and Open Embedded. Uh, the example that I've showed you is about Core Image Minimo, uh, which as the name suggests, is a very small image just capable of allowing the device to boot. Uh, in many occasions, uh, Core Image Minimo is too minimal <laughs> for uh, actually using the device. Uh, so actually, I recommend you um, to use core image base which is a console only again image uh, but it fully supports the target device hardware which means that you get uh, some additional kernel modules and basic stuff to make sure that you can uh, 
um, not only boot the board but actually use it for something more useful. Uh, there are other images such as core image, uh, full co command line. This is again a common uh, console only image but with more uh, full featured Linux system functionality installed out of the box. Core image Western uh, is using uh, the Wayland display protocol uh, with uh, Western as a compositor. It's again a very uh, basic image that just uh, turns on Western on the screen with a terminal. Core Image X11 is uh, providing similar functionality, but instead of Wayland, is uh, using uh, the uh, older uh, display protocol X11. Uh, so yeah, it's again a very basic X11 image with a terminal. Uh, these are these are the common images that you get out of the box by using uh, the Yocto project uh, and building Pocky images. Of course, if you're building your own device, you, you want something specific. So basically the idea is that you can extend these images. Um, these images are convenient because you can start with them, make sure that you have basic functions uh, working, uh, basic functions of the hardware working, and then move on to your own images. And uh, you can extend this to make a very, very uh, complex and um, um, uh, Linux distribution for a very specific use case. It could be um, even a spaceship, <laughs> uh, something controlled for a spaceship or um, a car, for example, automotive grade Linux is um, another project of the Linux Foundation which is uh, using the Yocto project and open embedded for building their images and automotive grade Linux is, um, is out there on millions of cars in including the Toyota Camry. So let's wrap it up with some conclusions. Uh, RISC-V is something really excited, uh, exciting because it brings the open source hardware movement to a new level, to a level where uh, we can speak about open source hardware of chips. Beagle 5 is the first affordable RISC-V developer board capable of running Linux. Uh, there are other boards such as um, the High 5 Unleash board out there on the market, but it uh, they are significantly um, more expensive than Beagle 5. Uh, Beagle 5 is possible thanks to the strategic partnership of uh, Beagle Board Foundation, uh, Seed Studio and Star 5. Uh, Beagle 5 is a very um, complex uh, project. It includes efforts by uh, various people from different uh, companies and organizations. But um, here it is. It is real. It exists. And it is with risk. Five uh, uh, system on a chip. Uh, so, uh, although at the moment uh, uh, there are images uh, available, for example, Fedora that you can burn on an SD card, plug in the um, Beagle 5 and just use it, it's recommended to use the Yocto project and open embed it to build your custom Linux distribution. The Yocto project uh, have various releases. It's recommended to use a long-term support release. You need a board support package. Uh, which for um, uh, Risk Five is provided as Meta Risk Five, and it includes definition for Beagle Five. Thank you very much for watching. I hope um, this talk was interesting. Um, here are some useful links, and I'll be happy to hear some questions. <laughs>